the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom I could probably use some heartbreak To get moving Tired of the way you let me down You fill me up with broken promises Mads, can you give me some long sleeves and long pants, but thin, because it's warm. But I am, oh! These bugs. Oh, jeez. Mm. Okay, we are underway again. So we got the anchor up, we're going along with the current, and we got our halfway point marked, and we should get there right on time. So we'll get there right when the tide changes so that we flow in with the tide and then flow out with the, with the outgoing tide on the other side of the inlet, or on the other side of the island at the next inlet. There we go. But there's these bugs, there's these bugs that bite so much, and there's so many of them. So I'm kind of about to put on long pants and long sleeves just to keep the bugs off of me, because, ah! Yep, Georgia. Cold or bugs, but it's beautiful. Thank you. Hiding from the bugs. Yeah. So I have ADD and it makes it really hard for me to concentrate on things for long periods of time, which means that Herbie's the one that tends to be the main driver of the ICW because he can just sit in one place and watch buoys for hours on end. That leaves me to edit videos and read out loud to him because that's that's what we do. Uh, all across the ocean I read out loud to him. I just am always reading a book uh, to both of us. So right now we're reading an Agatha Christie murder mystery. And I do the boring jobs of just sitting here, watch our depth, watch the buoys, and go that way. You can go out in the car, she added. I tell you, I want to get some exercise. Then she said abruptly, you've given Lawrence the sack, Sophia. Why? Sophia answered quietly, we're making other arrangements for Eustace and Josephine is going to Switzerland. Well, you've upset Lawrence very much. He feels you don't trust him. Sophia did not reply. It was at that moment that Tudor Werner's car had arrived, standing there, shivering in the moist autumn air. Brenda muttered, What do they want? Why have they come? So going with the current, some people use it as ways to set speed records for their boat, and they'll go like eight, nine knots on a boat that can only go like, say, six. But for us, we have like a set target goal speed, which is about four knots so if the current's carrying us at four knots we use almost no power and we move along at a comfortable speed over ground even though it's painfully slow through the water and we conserve our batteries and then if we come upon a part where you know we're against the current or whatever reason we need to use a little more thrust we have the battery power left over we are currently in old tea kettle creek <laughs> Okay, so we just reached the halfway point. Water flows in, water flows out. That's how tides go. You got the flood tide, tide comes in, ebb tide, tide goes out. Now, when you're going around an island that has two inlets, the south side and the north side, both of them, water floods in, water ebbs out. Now, if you can get to like the halfway point before the tide changes, then when the tide changes, you go out with the outgoing tide on the other side of the island towards the other inlet. got three more feet to go out. The current here is crazy. So we're coming along doing like four to five knots with the current. And then when we turned to come up this little bit, I had to like gun the engine all she had. We were doing two knots against the current, like speed over ground. Charlie. Gee. So 
thankfully we'd saved all that power, so that way we had the boost to gun the motor and really get us here. So we made it, we're anchored, and we're gonna go enjoy that beach over there. When we anchored here yesterday, it was really calm. We had a sandy beach. Everything seemed really nice. But then last night, this long swell just started rolling in the inlet. And it's still here this morning. So I'm going to get us out of here because the boat's moving around too much. We're in the ICW. The boat's not supposed to move. So the fact that we're rolling a lot, it's not great. So Maddie got seasick last night and just everything's just not pleasant inside the boat so therefore we're gonna scoot our butts further up the river now a trick that I'll do when I'm raising anchor especially alone is I'll raise a sail in our case I'm raising just the staysail because that's the one that we're using in the ICW and just that sail will power you up over the anchor and it's really nice because it'll power you up to the anchor so all you're doing is just cranking in the chain and then when you get to the anchor and it's like stuck and you gotta really muscle it to get it out of the ground, well, the staysail powers the boat right over it, pulls the anchor right out of the bottom, and then you just crank it off the bottom. And then the really, really nice part, if you anchored uh, in the lee of a shore, it's automatically going to pull you away from the shore as soon as the anchor's off the bottom because it's gonna pull the bow around and take you downwind. It's really, really handy. Like, honestly, the staysail, is my favorite sail on this boat. And when we rebuild Windpuff, he's gonna be getting a stay sail too. Cause it's like a must have on a cruising boat. So here's an awful truth. We, uh, we're sailing right now. No motor at all. I noticed that we were going pretty good speed and hardly using the motor, so I thought, why even use the motor? Let's just charge up with the solar panels. And we're sailing under just our staysail, going four knots because mostly current. We could put up our main and go a lot faster, but the awful truth is she's bagged, she's tied up. And if we got her out and we did all the work to get her out, we're then gonna have to bag her up again when we get there. And I don't know, just the ICW, it's like lazy and comfortable. So we just put the staysail up, call it a day. We get there, we get there a little later than we would have if we had full sail. But man, it's a lot easier. And that's, I feel really guilty about being so lazy with this, but at the same time, it's nice to take it easy for a change. Cause out in the ocean, like all we did was sail changes and sail and sail, sail, sail. It's, it's a lot of work and it's nice to just sit back and you know hoist the anchor drift to your next spot drop the anchor when you get there still feel guilty though what are your thoughts none yeah you just you don't want to talk about it okay I just want to have it on record that today is Tuesday two 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 very good now what are your thoughts and feelings about not putting up the main when we're sailing on a broad reach. I think it's sad to not put up the main, but honestly, it is so much work. I mean, we have to unbag it, untie it, and really that's not a huge deal, but then the bagging and the retying is so annoying. 
uh, when we're in the ICW and, you know, we might get a huge gust of wind and not be able, not actually have the room <coughs> to properly tack or jibe. And so it's just, uh, it's not quite worth all the effort. So, so how do you feel about right now we're sailing just under a tiny staysail? I know, that's uh, pretty <coughs> normal for us. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's working, and so that's all that really matters. We could be going faster with the main, uh, but the truth is we're happy to go <coughs> slowly, so we're not in a big hurry. If we were in a hurry, we'd put up the main. That would be that, but why do it if you don't have to? At this pitifully slow pace, we are actually going to get to the midway point at slack water right when the tide changes and starts sucking us out. So in actuality, if we went any faster, we'd get there too early and then start fighting current. There you have it. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. So that's why we're not putting up the main. It's not laziness. It's timing. Good morning. Mm, I love you. Kisses. Yes. Did you enjoy the roly roly anchorage last night? No, I actually got seasick in our anchorage last night, um, which was not great. I haven't taken a Dramamine since we. I don't want. I don't know when the last time I took a Dramamine was, but unfortunately, I had to last night in our anchorage, which is sad. <laughs> So it's kind of funny when you look forward because we're going sideways through the water because the current is carrying us more than anything. Just drifting along like driftwood. Alright, it was nice to reminisce about the old times when we came down the ICW and didn't have the battery power to actually motor. And we just drifted along with a little bit of sail. But uh, man, it's nice having the batteries and we're going to use them. So we're motoring again because it Going two and a half knots got a little slow for me. So now we're doing three and a half to four. And Maddie's making breakfast. Hey boy. No, it's not for you. Not for you. Dolphins never gets old. It is always really exciting to see dolphins, uh, but I will say we've been seeing dolphins every day here and it's pretty neat. I didn't expect to see so many dolphins in the ICW. They, I guess they come in here to fish. The thing is, they can't really see and they don't get nearly as excited to see us because we're not going really fast with all our sails up and they can't really bow ride us. So it's not as fun of an experience for either us or the dolphins <laughs> uh, versus being in the ocean when we're just flying along and they're bow riding and we're cheering for them and we can see them underwater gliding and it's it, there's really nothing like seeing dolphins in the ocean but I'm still happy that we're seeing them here in the ICW. Alright, we're anchored. The beach is like stupidly close to our stern so it's really deep all the way up to shore i was shooting the anchor with 12 feet under the boat and honestly i panicked when we had 18 feet under the boat ran up and dropped the hook because oh my god we were so close so now we're gonna get this poor little guy to shore so that he can pee oh my god <laughs> Go on, Morty! Go poo! I'm gonna move. We decided we needed a couple days to recharge, literally. So we actually moved anchorages into a nice quiet creek. So we won't have any wakes or um, crazy uh, wind over tide or anything like that. We're just in a nice, quiet, peaceful anchorage so that uh, we can take full advantage of tomorrow's sunshine and really charge up those batteries before heading on to our next destination. So we're anchored here and we're way too close to that side of the marsh 
the anchor's in the middle, and right now we got current going out, wind coming in, the boat's sitting all weird. So we're gonna be here for a few days. We'd rather not have the stress of thinking we're gonna hit that and get stuck. So I'm gonna run a stern anchor way down that way, about, say about 330 feet, because that's our road. Right all the way down and then crank on it. Pull it tight and pull the stern over that way. And then that'll keep us bowed to the wind that's gonna be for the next few days and just smack in the middle of this little creek. Now we're all ready to move on closer to Savannah and it is a hot, muggy day outside. Holy crap, I mean, I've been pulling 300 feet like this. And it's just killing my arms. So how do we charge said battery for the electric outboard? The tide's just starting to come in, so we're gonna make our way towards Hellgate, which is aptly named. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.